Hello and welcome to the 28th episode of Concerts at Home. My name is Adrian Spence. I'm the Artistic Director for Camerata Pacifica. Today, the first piece you'll have heard the first movement of a few weeks ago, Brahms Opus 111 String Quintet. When I've been reviewing videos for, to use at Concerts at Home, sometimes we've come across video with one movement, which is the case with the Brahms a few weeks ago. And I don't always know why we've only used one movement before. I, this time it wasn't a YouTube restriction. I really don't know. But I, I contacted my uh, video editor, Ben Mass, and I said, do we have the rest of this? And he said, sure. So we've brought the whole thing. We've, we're we're going to broadcast it for you today. All four movements. It's a, a wonderful work in Brahms' full-throated romantic vein, one of his latest works. So here we have from a performance, January 14th, 2014, Amy Schwartz Moretti, Paul Huang, Richard O'Neill, Jonathan Marshall, and Annie Asnavurian.
I met the composer Jake Hagee at a conference in Salzburg in 2007 and was immediately taken to his music. Jake has a gift for melody that is really very rare in classical music. Our most famous melodist is Schubert. Now, this simplicity in, in his writing hasn't always been well received by critics. On the other hand, he's absolutely loved by singers. And I'm inclined to agree with the singers. I commissioned him to write a piece of music for us, which was commissioned by Richard and Lucy Jansen. And, and so we made the arrangements, made the introductions, and off he went. And a short time later, a few months later, I received a phone call where Jake said, do you mind if, if, if I postpone this commission for a year or so? Um, I've just been asked by the San Francisco Opera to write an opera. I assented for my new friend and uh, the new opera was the sensation Dead Man Walking that would catapult Jake to the forefront of operatic writing in the United States and the world, and it's one of the most oft contemporary operas performed around the globe right now. We did thereafter receive this wonderful song cycle, Winter Roses, that we premiered with the fabulous Frederica von Stade, and it's written for a large ensemble, I think, for eight or nine uh, musicians. Later, Richard and Lucy became friends and friends of the Camerata, and later, um, I met Lucy's sister, Suzanne Bakuch, and they traveled with us to, on one of the Camerata trips to Ireland. Suzanne faced some significant health issues. And as she was ailing, I once again turned to Jake and asked him if he'd write a short piece for flute and piano that we would dedicate to Suzanne. Her illness advanced that um, she was unconscious when we received the piece and ailing dreadfully. I was sick and hastily recorded the piece in Lucy's, uh, Richard and Lucy's home. And uh, Lucy then took this recording to Suzanne's bedside and played it for her while she was unconscious. And sadly, um, shortly thereafterwards, she passed away. The piece is entitled Soliloquy, and it has been picked up a lot because it is just simply beautiful. And so here from, uh, it's a COVID piece again, here from July 2020, we have a beautiful performance by Damari McGill and Jessica Chu of Jake Heggie's Soliloquy.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome back Damari McGill and for the first time Camerata Pacifica, his brother Anthony, the brothers McGill. You sound like a fairy tale. You are a fairy tale. So here we have with us the, the principal flute of the Seattle Symphony Orchestra and the principal clarinet of the New York Philharmonic, all from the south side of Chicago. Oh yeah. That's right. Damari, Damari yes. told me, uh, told us all quite a lot about your background last week. So this is a follow up. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be here. <laughs> yeah. And congratulations on, on a huge award, that Avery Fisher Award. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I, uh, from the beginning, I, I found out about it back in uh, January. Um, and of course, you know, we were supposed to do a big celebration in June, um, and that didn't happen. All of that was canceled. So, uh, you know, we, they uh, did a really nice um, virtual celebration just the other week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we had a great time. And one really nice benefit is that um, they used some of the money uh, that would have been used for a live celebration to give to, um, to me to give to a charity or nonprofit of my choice. And um, it was really amazing to, to give it to some um, music students, some of the students at the Music Advancement Program where I'm the artistic director. So yeah. that was like the big, best, biggest, best part of this um, prize, I think. And what's that program? Tell us about that program. <clears throat> yeah, the program is, is um, it's actually run through, through Juilliard School, but um, you know, we, we do our own thing and we reach about 70 kids uh, and the mission is to reach uh, kids from underserved communities and um, underrepresented backgrounds in classical music. And uh, we give them like really intense conservatory style um, program on Saturday, Saturday all day long. 
and uh, you know it's really amazing that uh, work that I do because it's similar to how I grew up I went to a program that was similar in Chicago and my brother did as well and so um, it's just nice to be able to kind of share in that kind of cycle cycle of life and learning yeah well um, Damari did, did tell us about the bike. So, uh, man, I, we, need, we need to get your parents on here, too. I mean, I want to meet your parents. Like, what were they thinking? You know, it's like... Well, you know what? They were, they were thinking. Yeah. No, well, what I mean is, why did they stop having kids? You know, we, we, I'm not <laughs> suggesting an orchestra, but you could have done a wind quintet, man. Is it too late? Is it, can we talk to them? Oh, God. You can talk to them and let, I'll let them answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, and thank you so much for another video get. So you, you, we're, we're going to listen to the Schoenfeld Trio for flute, clarinet and piano. So you, you guys with Michael McHale, the, that begs another question. How the heck did you end up meeting a guy from Belfast. You, 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 probably, like you probably now know more people from Belfast than I do. It's like, what is that? Serendipity, serendipity. Yeah, Michael um, is being managed by uh, my current manager and Anthony's former manager. Uh, and so she, she connected us. We had our, our first performance it's part of a residency at Bowling, Bowling Green State University in Ohio. And we had a lot to do there in a very short period of time. So we didn't, we didn't have enough time to rehearse the full program. And uh, Anthony and I, we're, you know, we're pretty fine with that. And, um, and Michael, Michael was as cool as could be. And so it was in, in that sense, musical love at first sight, I guess. I mean, we just, we just clicked immediately. Yeah. And of course he, 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 uh, he plays with James Galway a lot. That's, that's... Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And he plays with um, Michael Collins um, as well. Right. And so he knows the repertoire of both of our instruments better than we do. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> he and Michael Collins have a pretty huge discography on, on Chandos. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but um, flute, clarinet, and piano. <laughs> what do you play? I'm just not, apart from the Schoenfeld trio, I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's not a lot of repertoire. What do you got? What do you play? What are you doing about that? Oh, yeah. Well, we have, um, you can actually go online and listen to all of our <laughs> recordings. Um, but we have um, a bunch of arrangements that we've done, but we've, there's also like a small group of pieces that are kind of standard works as well um, that we do. And so we mix it up. And we, you know, we have a couple you know, new pieces, commissions and things like that, that we work on. And um, it's actually kind of, kind of fun to try to expand that repertoire and like right. get to know what is there and hopefully make new things that no one's ever heard of before. But um, you know, what's interesting is that everyone, people tell us that all the time after they come to our concerts and they say, you know, I've never heard this combination before, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, we do too. Yeah. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. Well, and so, we have a, we have a good time with it. Mm -hmm. It certainly appears so. So, uh, like what we're about to hear, do, do, do either of you want to tell us about this trio that we're about to listen to? Well. I have to say, we were excited to discover this piece. We were looking for a piece, uh, you know, a longer piece of, of substance, um, as opposed to, you know, we do a lot of, you know, fun, shorter works as well. So we were happy to dis discover this, this work of, of dances. Um, what's fascinating and challenging uh, for us as performers is, what he does with these particular dances. If you listen closely enough, uh, you'll find things that you'll recognize. Um, but perhaps what makes it, you know, spectacular is that it, you, you do have to put a little bit of work into, you know, searching for um, that, 
that jig, you know, but it's, it's there. And so it actually brings a lot of satisfaction. I, I would imagine if you're an audience or online listening, um, you're going through this windy musical road and then you actually get to a jig, yeah. you know, it's very satisfying. And technically it's, uh, technically it's pretty challenging. Oh, yeah. So challenging, yeah, it's right? Really... It's challenging individual and challenging for you two to play together, particularly to you two to play together. Yeah, it's actually very difficult. Um, you know, there are just a lot of uh, rhythms that are kind of strewn together that um, don't necessarily line up together. So you have to find your way and oh, find really? your I way back I thought that was to just the beat. Amaring. I thought that was... <laughs> <laughs> we weren't just. It's not like we're just getting lost the whole way. No, I mean, so it's really tricky. So when you finally find that moment where you're all playing like this two D melody together, it really is effective. And um, mm -hmm. you know. I don't know about you, but I, I don't remember the last time I danced at Charleston. But um, so, but <laughs> usually when there's like a really distinct kind of pleasant, fun melody that you feel like you can dance to, that's the melody. Um, and then he throws in all of these crazy dissonances as well to kind of play with your mind a little bit. So you're kind of going through like this house of house of mirrors, you know, or or something like that at times. But then you arrive and you're like just in a, a, a normal house and uh, it's the music is really um, inventive I think and um, interesting and it is fun to play because you really do feel like you've accomplished a lot at the end of the piece. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fun to listen to and yeah I'm glad you guys are doing the work and I'm just I'm just hitting the volume <laughs> control here you know. So mm. hey I, I know you, you've squeezed in this little interview with us today. You're teaching a lot online, Damari, right? You're, you're doing a lot. Well, we both are. Both of you, yeah. yeah we spend, <laughs> probably spend a majority of our time in front of a computer. Who would have guessed? Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, it's nice that we can still do what we love. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. thank you for making the time for me today. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and let, let's, we'll find some more of your music. But uh, this is from a performance in December 2019 at the 92nd Street by Paul Schoenfeld's trio for flute, clarinet, and piano with Damari and Anthony and our friend from Belfast, Michael McHale. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you.